This is what I'm about to show, something I've never seen before until Dana had taught it to me, and I think it is the number one way. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about Close Guard. Close Guard's an amazing guard to play in Jiu-Jitsu because if you think about it, it's actually just mount upside down, okay? It's very safe. So I have Siraj and Close Guard. What's so good about it, okay? It's a common ideal in Jiu-Jitsu, but I'm using my legs and my hands just against his upper body, all right? So that's why you get to side control. That's why you get to mount because you have that ability and Close Guard gives you that. Not only does it give you that, but it also limits their ability to attack you. There aren't really high percentage attacks from inside close guard. He has to stand up and get out. So let's look at a complete system going from seated to standing, what our options are, if they get out, what we're gonna do, and what, what our main gambit is from this position. So just a concept in close guard, make sure that you're always using your knees. Close guard is not about your hands pulling in. Well, obviously that helps. You wanna be using your knees to pull someone in. Obviously your legs are much stronger. Your legs and core is what makes close guard really strong. So secondly, quite often close guard is a battle for inside position. Siraj wants his hands in the middle. He doesn't want them on the floor. And I want my hands in the middle, okay? When my hands are in the middle, I can grab his head. I can go for overhooks, okay? I can come inside for shoulder crunches, all right? So that's the first thing that we want to start to focus on. He's obviously going to keep his hands inside. He's going to try and get in my armpits, okay? And he's going to try and stand up with this. All right, so we don't want to let him get to that point. So once he gets his hands in our armpit, we're going to reach over, grab his four fingers, pull them to the middle, okay? And we're going to swap our grip to the elbow. First, we're going to look at getting to the top lock, which I believe is one of the most fundamental positions from close guard that you should be looking for. From this position, I really have to make sure to pull his elbow into my belly button, right? For arm bars and triangles and that kind of, kind of thing, if his elbow is outside of my hip, I don't really have an ability to climb my legs high. So I always wanna make sure I pull it inside. Now with this elbow grip, I can keep it there. I swap to the head so he can't posture as I open my legs. I put my foot in his hip, I shift out a little bit, and I lock my legs above his shoulder in the top lock, okay? This is a good spot for me now. I have a lot of offensive options. First thing we should do from here is the armbar. So I'm gonna keep his head. I'm going to underhook his leg, okay? And I'm gonna to start to cut this angle using the back of my knee, okay? And my quad to push into his head to control him here. When I'm ready, I slide my leg over his head. I don't do like a wide arc for him to posture out or anything like that. I slide right over his head and I make sure I'm back heeling on the top of his head, the end of the lever. Obviously here we have arm bars, okay? You can flip them down to finish a normal arm bar, okay? But in general, from this position, it's very safe. I keep the underhook and I grab the thumb and I break it over the hip. All right, great armbar. Now, from that position, let's look at some extra things that we can go for. So we've gone to top lock, all right, we're here. Now let's say as we open our legs and we swap, he's able to rip his right arm out. No problem, he just gave us a triangle, okay? Now we can swap to the normal triangle like this and finish, but from this angle, okay, it's quite common that he's gonna hide his arm straight away. Okay, no problem. We're gonna go to the reverse triangle. We grab our shin and we lock a full figure four. Now, the most simple option from here is gonna be the trimora, the kimura attacking this arm. So how do we set that up? First, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our hand out and we're gonna grab the elbow here. And we're gonna use our fingers to start to peel his wrist. Once we can see his wrist, we come and grab it with our hand, all right? Now, if he's still holding on with his other if he can reach both his hands together. Once I've got the wrist, that's still okay. I get my Kimura grip, and even if he keeps the grip, as long as I focus on getting his elbow to my sternum and then lifting up, he's gonna tap. The real power of the Trimora is that his shoulder and head is completely locked. So it's just a matter of millimeters yep. that puts a submission on, versus if it's totally open, you can take the arm all the way behind, okay? So that's our first gambit from the top lock. Now let's look at actually getting to mount because like I said before, close guard is just mount but reversed. So my favorite way to get to mount in no gi is called the high cross sweep. Here in close guard, he's got the inside position, okay? Maybe he's even attacking my uh, arms. He's gonna try and stand up, yep. okay? So just like we did before, we come, we grab the hand and we pull it in. This time we bring our hands underneath and we knee pull, okay? We have the inside position and we take a collar tie in the head, our right hand comes underneath the thigh. And what we're going to do is we want to get to a cross. That's why it's called the high cross, a perpendicular position. So we're gonna like helicopter our legs 
to build momentum to get out, to, to get that angle rather. So like this. So from here, I'm squeezing both my legs together so he can't rip his arm out. And the key detail, if you come around this way, is my, my leg is blocking his arm. So I can tip him, he can't really base. So from this position, it's common again for him to rip his right arm out. No problem. He gives me that same triangle dilemma we looked at before. But if we've done everything right, we've got great pressure. We're going to pull with our right arm and we're going to like scissor our legs, okay? And that's going to result in a sweep. So when we're ready, we've got him on top of us. We're going to shift and scissor. We hold the leg, you know, to consolidate position as he shakes and we're ready. We come out and we start looking for our underhooks. So that's one of my favorite ways to get to mount. Now let's look at taking the back from close guard. In my opinion, I think the best back take from close guard in no gi is going to be to do with the shoulder crunch. What I like to do to get this type of grip, people are very conscious of this and it's like hard to get it. So his hands are on the inside, he's fighting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fake a hip bump. So if I just come up like this, he's going to put his weight into me. He knows it's coming. So I'm going to fake that I'm like going this way. And then last second, I switch and I jump up that way. What happened? He based. I'm not going for this sweep, but I still have to send it in order to get this reaction. So from here, as I come back, I got my shoulder crunch grip. To keep the shoulder crunch tight, wrist to wrist is the best. I want to make sure my left elbow is coming up high and I'm pinching the elbow with my head. And this, his shoulder is at my sternum. This is going to ensure the tightest shoulder crunch possible. Okay. His posture is broken here. So from this position, I'm going to come around the back so you can see the legs. I'm going to start grapevining his legs. A lot of people don't know this, but it is one of the best ways to break posture from this position. So I extend to the opposite side that I want to take the back. All right. He can't stand up here. And from very easy to start getting my right elbow underneath my ribs. So if you come around behind me, okay, what I need to do, I'm going to grab his lat. This leg is going to come vertical. And from this position, I can't come out like this. It's too hard. All right. I need to actually bring my elbow underneath my ribs. And like this, it's very easy to come behind him. All right, and now I have an underhook. I come up right into a body triangle. Make sure you don't stay here, he can knock you off. As soon as you get to this position, you go double underhooks and you got the back. Now, last thing that we'll talk about is actually dealing with them standing up. Now, this is what I'm about to show, something I've never seen before until Dana had taught it to me. And I think it is the number one way to stop somebody standing up. And like I said, it's very rare. I haven't really seen it, but it is so effective. So Siraj goes to stand up. Okay. Oh no. What am I going to do? So I am very simply going to keep my guard closed frame on his shin. Okay. And I'm going to do a very strong knee pull while pushing on his shins and I'm pulling all his weight over his hips. It's impossible for him to stay standing. So as he tries to stand up, he has to fall. It's extremely powerful. And from here, ideally, his put his hands on the floor. I can come under, get my underhooks, and I can do that same back take that we looked at before, right? Now, let's say he does actually start to stand up high, and maybe he's stronger than me. I can't do the shin push. Of course, we've got lumberjacks here. I come underneath, I frame with my hand. What really makes the sweep work is my hips driving into his knee, all right? It's like this action of buckling his knee that makes him fall. So come back up, please. So he stands up. If I'm just pushing here with my hands, it's not enough. I need to lift my hips into his knee. So I push with my hand, I pull with my other hand. All right, and I'm gonna drop my hips into his knee. Now from this position, it's not a win yet. Immediately, I need to put my elbow on the floor and I need to reduce the distance between my hips and his chest. The way that I do that is I do kind of like a sit out like this. And now much more of my weight is on his body. And from here, it's easy to drive right into mount. Now the last way, let's say that he does actually open our legs. He stands up. All right. I've made all the mistakes. He's out. He's shaking them open. We can hook underneath wrist to wrist. Okay. Extend with our leg and go right into K guard. Okay. And start attacking 50, 50 heel hooks. And let's say you're not really that good at heel hooks, you're not comfortable with them. Our other option, as he goes to stand up, so he's shaking them, they're about to open. I grab his leg, foot on the hip, right foot goes behind the knee, I sit on the ankle, and I'm gonna hit a tripod sweep, okay? 
I pull with this, I push with my leg, and I lift my butt off the ground. To finish this, immediately growth hands on the leg, high stop, lift the leg, so I can't, can't stand up and finish my sweep. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is a very thorough, complete guide to playing close guard in no gi. If you guys master that whole system, I can guarantee you, you're gonna be beating and submitting a lot of people in close guard. I know there's a lot there, break it down, watch it a few times. The best way that I recommend to learn this is to just drill it in sequences. It might take a few weeks, might take a few months, but try and master one thing at a time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe, follow, share for more. See you guys next time. Thanks.